very good morning to all the topic what we're going to discuss today is on oedipus rex written by sophocles first of all before explaining about sophocles or about oedipus rex we should know what exactly is the greek theater it looks somewhere like this the amphitheater semicircle with a central viewing area if you look into the picture you would see it's a semicircle it's not a complete circle and that is the place where the audience used to sit and the down the stage whatever we can see there the drama was enacted to get a more information on that the dressing scene would be the dressing room for the actors would be in the parking lot where that square rectangular space is being seen then we have thymili the altar of gods and on that is on the middle stage means if at all a god character is been there in the drama but obvious that would be on the thymili section we have a skinny section that is for the place of the scenery whichever kind of space whichever kind of scenes we are to be enacted that would be shown on the skinny place orchestra where the actors performed on stage that would be on the front of the stage and the theater and the audience place to sit and watch the theater movie a kind of miniature picture of again the greek theater skinny as i told you about the pictures uh, scenes orchestra where the actors are been and acting they play and thymili is the place where the god goddess characters are been displayed if at all a character stands there that means it has to be understood that it would be on the thymili side that means it would be god Parados would be the place where the odes are being sung by the chorus. Theatron audience place. Again a very clear picture where you can see in the theatron the audience are moving on. Parados where there are characters who would be there for the chorus section. The characters in the or uh, the characters means the real characters whoever are the actors in the act are in the orchestra. The altar where uh, the thymili section where the gods would be coming. and at the same time there would be the skinny portion where you can see the scene that would be it would be a palace history about the greek theater plays were a part of festival to honor the gods and oedipus honors the deity dionysus god of fertility every citizen attended this place sometimes even up to 15000 times and at the end of the festival the judges would vote for the best play whatever they have seen and talking about a few of greek gods one is dionysus the god of wine and fertility and even the god of drama to whom to please whom the dramas are being played apollo the god of healing and prophecy sometimes even said that the sun god zeus the supreme deity of gods and athena goddess of wisdom you can see the picture of dionysus and apollo given here now about greek drama one of the oldest form of drama that is from the 6th century and it grew out of religion and myth the reason why because people would be accustomed and people would be knowing about the stories content because they have already known in the religion or in the myth they would be slightly giving a twist to the character or to the story whatever is being said and it is always performed as religious festival to honor dionysus the god of wine and fertility has been said earlier and only male characters were allowed to perform no female characters costumes were high boots large padded clothing and mask made of linen or leather attached to wood the reason because as you might have seen the theatron is a very small place so even if the orchestra among the orchestra on the stage of it all the character are supposed to play some characters some roles they look according to their costumes and they make sure that the costumes are of huge figure so that the audience sitting in even on the back bench or the back seat would be able enough to visualize the characters again after greek theater history we are going to look into greek tragedy specifically the reason because our point of concern is oedipus so full of uh, oedipus rex by sophocles which is indeed a tragedy now the word tragedy originates from tragos which means goat winner of festival would receive a goat as prize which was supposed to be something very auspicious focused on popular myth and legend oedipus trojan war hercules perseus and the god and goddesses that were the theme or the content or the topic which they used to decide on and it was examined as 
the consequence of individual action the relationship of people to the gods and the role fate plays in life that even till date this is one of the most important topic what is been taken for drama and the best known writers of those ages Aeschylus Euripides and Sophocles and in the order if you want to know it's Aeschylus he wrote 80 plays out of which 7 are exact that means it uh, only 7 are existing right now Sophocles wrote 100 plus pay, plays he wrote more than 100 plays but then out of which only 7 are extant right now and Euripides no doubt he wrote 90 plays but then a few more are being recovered a few more for let's say 18 to 19 plays are extinct right now even tragedy as we all know is a serious drama featuring a hero or main character often of noble birth that has to be highlighted it has to be a noble birth who strives to achieve something and is ultimately defeated thereby it forms a tragedy the most structure of greek tragedies present a tight formal arrangement of parts these are the parts with which the greek dramas were enacted the first one is prologue prologue is the opening scene of a play then we have parados where the first chorus song or the choral ode would be sung and from that we get to know the scene that from there we get to know the plot dialogue obviously as normal we know it is the conversation of the play's characters choral odes are those lyrical codes which uh, sophocles treated as collective actors a group of collective actors would act as choral odes giving specification of each and every incident whatever happens and exodus would be the concluding scene in the play to get a uh, more insight on sophocles he was considered to be the greatest playwright from ancient greece it is believed he won the athenian festival 18 times and he never took a third position he was very very much involved in political and military affairs too and Oedipus Rex is a part of his trilogy. What is trilogy? We will get to know in the later part. And uh, he is supposed to be the in innovator of third actor. He innovated uh, adding addition of a third actor was to include painterly scenery. Painted scenery were given first on Oedipus actions or rather you can say in Sophocles plays you could see the stage with a scenery of painted pictures. He reduced the size of chorus to 15 men. Purpose of chorus is to represent the citizen who often question, advise and express their opinion. Never showed violence seen on stage. Violence was reported by a messenger, a character in the play. But uh, an exception would be Ajax. Ajax is only one play of Sophocles where a kind of uh, violent actions are also being shown in the uh, stage. Theme as we know would be the central idea or the insight of a particular work of art and here in Oedipus Rex faith versus free will would be the prime concern why in Greek literature or rather in Greek culture to be said it was always a question whether it was possible to avoid one's faith by simply a chance or an attempt to avoid prophecy because always we believe in destiny so is it really working or can we change the destiny that was always a question and i guess even right now the question prevails oedipus has been pronounced means swollen foot how come we'll get to know was a mythical greek king of thebes he fulfilled a prophecy that said he would kill his father and marry his mother and thus brought disaster on his country and family. This legend was being retold in many versions and was used by Sigmund Freud to name Oedipus complex. Psychological term. There are many different versions of the legend of Oedipus due to its oral tradition. Significant variations on the legend of Oedipus are mentioned in fragments by several Greek poets and even dramatists which include Homer, Hesiod, Pindar, Aeschylus and Euripides too. However, the most popular version of the legend comes from the set of Theban plays by Sophocles. Uh, earlier I mentioned the trilogy that is this is the trilogy. The first one is Oedipus the King, Oedipus Rex, then Oedipus at Cadmo Colonus and Antigone. This is the trilogy out of which the first one, Oedipus the King, is our prime concern. Oedipus the King, also known as known by Oedipus Rex, as in Latin, 
is an Athenian tragedy by Sophocles that was first performed on 429 BCE that is before Christian era. It was the second of Sophocles three Theban plays to be produced but it comes first in the internal chronology followed by Oedipus at Colonus and then Antigone. Over the centuries it has come to be regarded by many as a Greek tragedy par excellence. To be uh, more specific about Theban uh, play, uh, we need to know about the royal house of Thebes where you can understand Cadmus was the first king of Thebe, Thebes and he married Harmonium. He had several kids out of ch several children out of which Polydorus and Nectesis bore son Labados, whose son was Laios who married Jocasta and from there we are going to look on a look after because our Oedipus Rex, Oedipus the king would be having Jocasta married Linus from there uh, we are about to start with the story. As I already mentioned structure of Greek tragedy first of all we'll have a prologue which would be the opening portion set the scale a stage containing exposition exposition means it would be revolve, uh, re uh, revealing something then we have paradox entrance song of chorus chorus would be coming and giving an entrance song it would be again exposition then there would be episodes scene by scene there would be actions uh, there might be conflict there might be a rising action then there would be statimons Odes performed by the chorus alternate with episodes. Each episode would be complied with alternate uh, odes. And there you can find the climax and even the anticlimax that is the falling action. Or exodus finally it concludes the section of tragedy with chorus singing final lines as they exit. That would be a kind of resolution. The story of Oedipus as been in uh, Sophocles play is like it begins some 12 years before the action of the play. Oedipus has been made the king of Thebes in gratitude for his freeing of people from the pestilence brought, by, brought on them by the presence of the riddling Spinex. What is Spinex and how? Let's see. Spinex somewhere looks like this. Spinex a winged man-eating creature with a lion's body and a woman's head. Normally uh, it can be said about a person's head. His, it's vicious and single-minded. Name of the Greek word spingo means to strangle. Uh, you can see into the picture it shows a face of a female and then it has a body of a lion and it has a wings. The spinix riddle was the one thing which was hurting or which was as a pestilence on the Thebian on Thebes. The spinix plagued Thebes with her riddle. She had a riddle which nobody could even solve. The th question, the riddle was, what walks on four legs in the morning, two in the afternoon and three in the evening? When Oedipus solved the riddle, the spinach killed herself and he inherited the throne of Thebes, which also include Queen Jocasta. The answer what Oedipus gave was mankind. How? Because we have three stages in life. We crept on the ground with both feet and hands as a child, means four in the morning. Then we, when we grew up, we had two legs, we walked on legs, so we were uh, elderly, we were matured, we were uh, able, energetic, that is in the noon, noon time we had, we walked on two legs. And finally, when we were unstable, we being old, we are to hold a stick or a cane, means total we have four. That was the question as we could see. What works on four legs in the morning, that is as a child. Two in the afternoon, that is a man in his matured age. And finally, when he gets old, he needs a stick or a cane, that is three in the evening. Finally, the answer was mankind, which Oedipus gave. As been given, the government in Thebes had sent out notice prior, prior to this. No matter if somebody found a clue to the mystery of Spinex, the queen will marry him and let him inherit the throne that Laius left over. Laius by that time was supposed to be killed by somebody who will be getting to know in the later part. Thus Oedipus had been further honored by the hands of the queen Chocasta also. He didn't know where, who Chocasta was but then he just knew that she was the queen of Thebes. Another deadly pestilence is raging and the people had come to ask Oedipus to rescue them as before. The king has anticipated their needs, however. Creon Jocasta's brother, 
returned at the very moment from Apollo's oracle from the announcement that all will be well if Laius murderer be found and cast from the city. Now there is a point to be noted that whenever a character, whenever a royal character has any doubts, they had a facility that they would directly call the god and ask for advice. That is the oracle. We have two oracles. The first is the oracle of son Apollo, uh, god Apollo or even the oracle of Delphi. Uh, this character is uh, the character of Delphi. So means if at all they have a kind of doubts, they can easily go and they can ask for suggestion and they would be able enough to get to know uh, their future or rather the God would give a prophecy which they need to abide or which they need to be caring of. Thus exposition starts, Oedipus, location is prologue, paradox. People plead to Oedipus to end the plague. Because they already knew that he was the one who could uh, give the answer to the riddle of Phoenix and save uh, Thebes. So this time also they wanted his help. Oedipus curses the murderer whom he blames for Thebes' problem. The people plead to the god for mercy. Oedipus didn't know who killed the king. And that is why he was cursing the murderer. Whoever the curse murderer was has to be taken away from Thebes. Only then the problem of the city would be cured. So the people were pleading to god for mercy. In an effort to discover the murderer, Oedipus sends for the blind seer Tiresias. Now, Tiresias was a prophet of Apollo. Again, there is another, like I said, the oracle of Delphi. And now here there is another prophet called Tiresias and he was the prophet of Apollo. Different stories were told of the cause of his blindness. The most direct being that he was simply blinded by the gods for revealing their secrets. The first and the most common one like was a messenger to God but then he tried to reveal God's secret and that is why he became blind. There is yet another story about Tiresias that uh, he was uh, uh, walking somewhere and it happened that he could uh, he watched uh, the goddess of wisdom Athena taking her shower and that is why she cursed him and made him blind. Yet another the story is there that he watched and even stabbed snakes who were in the mating position. So then there also he got a, cry, a, a curse and because of that he became blind and finally what happened is like he was also given a curse that for 7 years he needs to be uh, a lady and then only he needs to be a man and he would be dying, not dying even if he is getting old. That was, I mean, there are many stories regarding Tiresias but overall here in Sophocles uh, Oedipus Rex he is uh, taken as the prophet of Apollo who can give future who can profess future the episodes conflict or the rising action the central conflict that moves the plot forward that is the episodes location scene one or one Tiresias identifies Oedipus as the murderer Oedipus rejects the accusation the people are confused should they believe Oedipus their king or Tiresias the prophet now the people get confused because Tiresias was being asked and he got the information that Oedipus was the person who has to be sentenced out of Thebes so everybody got confused and Oedipus rejected that accusation because he believed he never killed a king that was even Tiresias didn't will to speak but under protest was that the prophet names Oedipus himself as the criminal Oedipus outraged at the accusation denounced it as the plot of Creon, the brother of Jocasta, to achieve the kingdom back. Jocasta appears just in time to avoid a battle between the two men. Sears, she assures Oedipus are not infallible, means this kind of prophecies are not worth believing. That is the advice what Jocasta gives to Oedipus so as to calm down his anger. This was the line what she used to, uh, she did say. Why should a man who leaves life seems ruled by chance live in fear? A man who never looks ahead, who has no certain vision of his future, it's best to live haphazardly as best one can. Me, she is just asking why should you believe in that because you live according to your will. So why should you think about this kind of actions? You should just live your life as you believe in. And there is no part of oracles or there is no part in prophecies in one's life. You should not believe in these things. To proof, she cites the old prophecy that her son should kill his father and have children by his mother. That was the prophecy what she got when she married Laius. She prevented its fulfillment, she confesses, by abandoning their infant son. How? 
lice tightly binds the feet of infant together with a pin and orders jakasta to kill the infant but she doesn't do that because she is hesitant she orders a servant to commit the act for her instead the servant takes baby to a mountain top to die from exposure now you need to make sure that this is the line now see lice tightly binds the feet of the infant together with a pin that means when it is tightly bound binded means it becomes swollen and that is why the name comes edipus means swollen foot this is uh, the kind of uh, name implication as for lies she again further explains because uh, you need to see that uh, the prophecy was she uh, uh, the son would kill his father and have children by his mother so the son is killed now and it is been uh, said the son was, uh, will kill the father but on the other hand as for lies he had been killed by robbers years later at the junction of three roads on the route to delphi that has been mentioned this information on the other hand makes edipus uneasy a bit why because he recalls having killed a man answering lies description at his, the very spot where he was fleeing from his home in corinth to avoid a fulfillment of a similar prophecy Oedipus even had a kind of prophecy said by a priest in the very initial stage where he is being said about some kind of prophecy what it is it's uh, uh, a pr- the same kind of prophecy that he would be supposed to kill his father and marry his mother and bear children from her he was a bit uneasy by that time and in the meantime an aged messenger arrives from Corinth the place where Oedipus belongs to announce the death of king polybus supposed father of edipus and the election of edipus as king in his stead on account of the old prophecy edipus refused to return to corinth until his mother to his death because he remembers his own prophecy also that he would be killing his father now that is been gone because his father is no more but then the second content is like he would be bearing child, children from his mother so he wanted his mother also to be dead only after he would be returning to corinth that is what his decision was how he took this decision the reason is oedipus oedipus had asked apollo's women pontifex another kind of prophecy speaker again these people would be coming on the thymeli section whether he is the right heir for the throne of corinth he asked the question to the pontifex whether he would be the correct a uh, hire for his country the pontifex said leave your father otherwise you will kill him when meeting next time then marry your mother give birth to several children with her that was the prophecy given by the pontifex to edipus that is the reason why he left corinth and reached thames there he tries to solve the riddle and marries jocasta in order to make sure that he is not going to kill his father and he is not going to even marry his mother to calm his fears the messenger assures him that he is not the blood son of polybus and mirop mirop uh, the taken for granted mother but a foundling from the house of liars deserted in the mountain this statement is confirmed by the old shepherd whom jocasta had charged with the task of exposing her baby thus the ancient prophecy had been fulfilled in each dreadful details now whatever the prophecies were it is all clear now because edipus also got a prophecy uh, jocasta also got a prophecy now both of them could intermix because it is now when edipus is able to understand that he is not the original son of polybus and mirop on the other hand he is the son of lais and jocasta he killed his son been i mean he was not able to understand that it was his own father but any which ways he killed there on the three road section three road cross section and finally he comes to thebes and he marries his own mother rising action comes here location scene 2 or 2 oedipus discovers that lies was killed where three roads meet and that the servant who witnessed the death left the house of lies when oedipus became king oedipus killed all those people who were there uh, on the three road uh, meet but he left just one man and that man came to thebes by the time he could understand that oedipus became the king uh, clearing the riddle of the spinex so he left tapes on the spot the people want against rejection rejecting oracles people always used to people in the sense the chorus always try to warn the king and the queen about rejecting oracles but they didn't believe in that and finally this disaster prevailed in location scene 3 or 3 
Oedipus discovers he was adopted by Polybus that he was found as an infant at Mount Kithrarion. Jocasta in her horror hangs herself when this incident comes in light she could not bear the truth so she hangs herself and using the pin from the brooch on her gown Oedipus stabs his own eyes then he imposes on himself the penalty of exile which he had promised for the murder of Laius and finally perishing in Colonus which the continuation you find in Oedipus at Colonus Uh, the trilogy one of the next trilogy of uh, sophocles after placing his daughters under the protection of creon the brother in law or rather you can say the brother of jocasta the chorus alone laments the sad story of oedipus the greatest of men who fell so low this section can be watched in stantimons that is in the climax or the falling action the moment of the highest tension peaks out here the conflict comes to a head that is in location scene 4 oedipus discovers that he was lais son leaves athen and moves towards the mountain as an infant to die because he's already uh, pierced his eyes off so he is now not more than a infant so he is uh, deciding for moving to the mountain to die out there itself then there is falling action location out for exodus resolution comes out later on The people mourn Oedipus' fate, devastated that one so great could fall so far. Jocasta hangs herself. Oedipus blinds himself. Thus, the protagonist responds to the events of the climax, and various plots, elements introduced in the rising action are resolved. Resolution comes in location Exodus section. Oedipus exiles himself from Thebes after reflecting on the curse he brings upon his children. the people caution that no one should take the comfort for their lives for granted an ending that satisfactorily answers all the questions raised over the course of the plot for this i would like uh, to um, make you people watch a kind of the last slide where uh, edipus stabs his own eyes and then the dialogues whatever comes here it goes up to him now to deal with you he will advise us and take action as provisional governor in your place pray on the court there's nothing i can say to him and why should he listen to anything i say i treated him unjustly i haven't come to crow either of us now you are down not to accuse you of crimes or misjudgments committed in the past but you people if you have no respect for the common decencies the sympathy due to any man's suffering revere the sun at least whose warmth and brightness sustains us the open street at the end of the day is no place for a thing unclean cursed and sentenced to be cast out not even in the open air on the common earth or under the rain from heaven will he find welcome or shelter take him in the sufferings are no business of the public it's private a question of family grief and prayer a matter for his relations not the whole city this is a kindness creo edipus or the i expected in my degradation or rather you can say he is requesting to grant the person who is standing over Not here is crayon uh jocasta's brother and there you can in the back portion you could see the chorus get rid of me quickly these are the dialogues the last Deport lines were me to some empty wasteland so where the human voice is never heard and you can see on the upper platform you can find jocasta's dead body and it seems safer as a matter of priority to and consult the other on the other spoken would come on ambiguously kill the father killer drive out the unclean thing i am the man that's true that's what was said but in circumstances as extraordinary as these It seems safer to consult the god again. Oh what? I am the cause of all this pain and the punishment is known. What is that to us? Haven't you of all men learned to trust the gods? Yes. I've learned that. One favor more I must ask or beg. The woman who lies dead in the palace 
Let her be buried decently with whatever formalities you think appropriate. She's your sister, your flesh and blood, and you owe her that. In my case, Thebes is my country, my homeland, though I never knew it until today, and my presence alive within her walls would be a curse on her. Let me leave and go up into my own mountains of Kithairo. My mother and father left me there to die in the wilderness, and I shall die now in accordance with their wishes who wish me dead. My death, I know, will be mysterious. My life was saved miraculously, and not for the common death of old age or sickness, but for some other ending, awe-inspiring, and perhaps evil. Let it come as it will. And now, my children, the boys, Creole, Polynices and Ethiocles, they're almost men and can look after themselves wherever they go. But the girls, they're so small, such babies yet. They've shared everything with me, food and drink and company. I doubt if they've ever so much as eaten a meal away from their father. Look after them, Creon, for my sake. And if I could just once more touch them and share my tears with their, just once more, kindness and generosity could do no more grasping their hands and remembering I could imagine I had eyes to see them once more before I go. I heard something. Are they here already? Are they crying? You have taken pity, Crayon, and brought them to me unasked. The dearest of my children, am I right? I know how much you love them, and love them still in spite of everything. God bless you, Crayon. May you have better luck both as a king and as a man than I've had. Children, where are you? Come here to me. Embrace me. Antigone is Mamie. These hands are your brother's hands and your father's. The hands that blinded me. I was blind already, if the truth be known. I saw nothing as I fathered you on my own mother, only a wife. Was ever a man more blind? My eyes can't see you now, but they can cry still, and they do, to think what hard lives you will lead in the world when you're grown up, the vicious things people will say, festivals and public holidays, no fun for you they'll be staying at home in tears while the others enjoy themselves, and then later, when you're old enough to be married, where is the man who will be brave or foolhardy enough to take you on and that scandalous reputation that shall stick to all my children and my children's children. Their father killed his father, then plowed up the same ground where he sprouted, gave his own mother children. Those girls, yes, they're his sisters. That's the sort of thing people will say. And who will marry you in those circumstances? Nobody will, my poor girls. Virginity and barrenness is all you can look forward to. Crayon, Monoikis was your father, and you must be their father. Now, as nearest kin, the two of us who brought them into the world are both dead, or oh, dead to them. They're quite alone apart from you. Don't let them wander as orphans through the world, homeless as well as husbandless, and don't condemn them to share the punishment that falls on me. They're very young, very poor now. And if you don't help them quite without hope, promise me. And take my hand upon the promise.
older, my girls, and could understand such things, I could tell you so much. But we'll leave that now. When you say your prayers, ask for peace, a place to call home, and a better life than your father. That's enough. No more tears in public. You must go inside. No. Not yet. Just a moment longer. Even against your better judgment. No. Everything must be done correctly. The proper thing at the proper time. On one condition. Then I have your promise. My promise? To send me into exile. That is the God's decision, not mine. I shall follow their instructions. Don't force me in there when the gods hate me. If they hate you, they will cast you out. But do you agree? Will you do what I ask? No. I shall do what I say I will do. Well. I'm in you. Now, that was a scene from Oedipus Rex, the last section and from that you can understand one thing that crayon though oedipus accuses him that uh, he he would be the person who might have killed laius but then finally when he understands that the third three portion one third portion of thebes was uh, of Creon and he was not power hungry he realizes his mistake but later on he becomes a very kind and good friend of Oedipus when he readily accepts to take care of his daughters again one more thing we need to remember is uh, from the from the royal house of Thebes you can knew like Jocasta was married to Laius Jocasta then gets married to Oedipus, his own, uh, her own son, and here you can see that there are four children given: Antigone, Ismene, Itchcolus, and Polynices. Here we are given a detail of like four children were there for Oedipus and Jocasta, and on the other hand, Creon, uh, Jocasta's brother, married Eurydice, and he is having her son Hemion. Now, in Oedipus. Rex or Oedipus the king by Sophocles, we get to know that Jocasta marries Oedipus and gets two daughters that is Antigone and Ismene. The two boys are not being mentioned. But on the other hand, in uh, Antigone, it is all clearly mentioned. That means coming back to our section. The character has been explained in uh, Oedipus Rex. You can see Laios, Jocasta gets married to Oedipus. And later Laios marries Oedipus and then gets Antigone and Ismene. This is the Delphi Oracle. You can see the table where you understand that thanks, where you understand that that is the shrine of God Apollo and where all the oracles are being sold out means whoever the king or the queen or whoever is having a doubt about their prophecy whoever is suffering from a pestilence they would come to this shrine and they would ask for the prophecy and the greek god would give them the guidance it was built around a sacred spring was considered to be the omalos or the central of the world priestess of apollo pythia gave cryptic answers to those who were seeking answers to it as we all know the character tragic hero means uh, the one who would make an error of judgment or has a fatal flaw that combined with fate and external force bring on a tragedy that is hamartia the weakness or the flow that is uh, the particular mistakes or uh, flow he knows tra- uh, character or in then the hubris means the excessive r- pride or arrogance this was one of the problem with oedipus also he was a bit more uh, pri- proud and finally he would meet with his catharsis self realization and self awareness that is also happening in oedipus rex oedipus suffers because he is a great human being yes he makes an error but it is his greatness as a human being which leads him into his error that word error is important it comes from aristotle's concept of hamartia the characteristics of the tragic hero which leads to his destruction this phrase is often translated as tragic flow 
and again about if you uh, you all may be knowing about aristotle's concept about tragedy a tragedy would be an imitation of an art that is serious complete and of a certain magnitude in language embellished with artistic ornaments the several found terms extracts been found in separate part of the play thereby evoking the emotions of pity and sorrow and which leads to the proper purgation of the fo uh, uh, soul that is catharsis and that uh, evocation of sorrows emotion is the tragic uh, flow and uh, hamartia has been said weakness which enables the emotion flow some interesting facts coming on in his first competition sophocles beats achilles achilles in subsequent competitions he won 24 times and never placed any lower than second he never scored a third rank he always scored either first or second oedipus did not win the year it was completed you need to know that sophocles did not act in any of his plays because his voice wasn't strong enough Although there is little known about Sophocles himself the general thought it that is that he was a good-natured man his whole life and was very well liked Sophocles wrote a 100 plays but only as we know 7 are in existence the plays are Oedipus the king Oedipus at Colonus Antigone Ajax uh, as i mentioned it was having a big kind of uh, um, tragic uh, violence in the stage Trachinian women Electra and Philoctetes Aristotle used Oedipus the king as the best example of tragedy in his definition of the form which i told like uh, it's a imitation of an act action that has serious implication in a complete story and of a certain magnitude it used a heightened language and includes incident that arose pity and fear in the audience at the end there must be an emotional purgation a catharsis based on the inevitable downfall of a main character thank you